Hey there, folks. Welcome to another episode of What's Cooking at the Capitol with me, Adam. Uh, I'm glad to have you here in the kitchen today. It is so cold outside. I know I don't have to tell you that. Uh, the polar vortex, it's back, it's cold. And uh, in spite of that, they're cooking up a bunch of crap at the Capitol. Um, we're going to get into that today. Uh, but first, we're going to talk about what's cooking here in my kitchen. Um, because of everything that's going on, uh, you know, going into Valentine's Day weekend, uh, the cold outside, uh, I decided that I needed some cookies. So today we're making oatmeal raisin cookies. Little tip for you though, I'm subbing out dried currants for the cookies. Uh, I know some folks like to put nuts in their cookie mix. Some people like to put chocolate chips in there. I'm just stri sticking straight up uh, oatmeal uh, raisin cookies today. That's my favorite. So that's what I'm making. Uh, I went ahead and made my dough, my cookie dough ahead of time today just because I didn't want to be running a beater with you in the kitchen with me. Uh, but I'm rolling out the cookies right now. We're going to get them stuck in the oven after we do a couple updates. Then we're going to be joined by a special guest, Ava Allen Ryan from Iowa CCI Action Fund, uh, who is one of our farm and environmental organizers, is going to be joining, uh, joining us to talk about two bills that we're cooking up at the Capitol this week. And uh, then we'll give you a, a quick snapshot of what's coming up ahead. So what is cooking at the Capitol? Well, you know, like I said, uh, it's uh, it can be described as a bunch of crap. Uh, we are seeing a lot of bills moving, a lot, a lot, a lot of bills moving up at the Capitol, uh, mainly focused on subcommittee and committee work. Legislators are, um, you know, focused on these subcommittee hearings to, to get feedback on policy proposals and then moving them through committees. Again, we're looking at this, uh, at the deadline that's coming up, that is March 5th. Uh, that is the first final date when bills have to be out of a committee. Um, some of those things that we saw moving this, uh, and, and just to give you a, a snapshot of how many bills we're talking about, we're up to over 1,200 bills that have been introduced at the state capitol so far. The House has been a lot more active on our bill introductions. We've seen about um, 700 there and just over 500 in the, in the Senate. So the House is definitely seeing a lot more action uh, at, at the Iowa capitol. Um, this week, a big focus there in the House was, uh, again, with schools, uh, schools and child care. Uh, we saw a package of child care reforms moving forward, some of them actually good, uh, passing with, with full bipartisan support, one or two of those not so good, um, and, uh, and, and drawing some concerns from folks who are working on those issues. Another hot topic uh, up at the Capitol uh, was um, school aid, the annual increase that our schools across the state get as well as a bill to provide some COVID relief to schools. Notably speaking though, uh, Iowa's largest school district here in Des Moines was left out of that, that COVID relief package for schools. Uh, so, you know, it's just interesting to me that we see kind of a, a punitive package of COVID relief for schools moving At the same time, legislators have prioritized things like school vouchers uh, and, and other very punitive policies when it comes to our schools. You know, it makes me kind of think we, as we were uh, you know, looking ahead after last last fall's elections, we were looking at what was coming up this legislative session. Um, you know, we were kind of, uh, I heard people kind of joking, is like, you know, what's left uh, for legislators to, to attack? What can they do? And uh, the reality is there's plenty left to attack. Um, and that's what we're really seeing this legislative session. We're seeing the Republican Party really lean into what I would almost call a culture war. Uh, you know, they're not focused right now on helping make life better for more people. That's what we believe uh, they should be doing at the state house. that legislators, all legislators and our governor should be doing at the state house, uh, the people's business. Instead, we see them focused on the politics of division, trying to divide us over how we reopen our state, trying to divide us over uh, how we support our schools, even going so far as to focus on extremely divisive things like um, a transgender bathroom bill, um, uh, you know, the abortion ban, the gun, uh, gun um, attacks on the safety net, or what we often call a war on the poor. So instead of doing work that actually helps folks, uh, they continue focusing on dividing us, trying to stoke fear. You know, take this, this trans bathroom bill, for instance. Uh, this is, you know, about making trans people into monsters when um, there's, there's, you know, there's nothing there. Uh, it's, it's just punitive. It's, it's hateful. It's divisive. We're seeing attacks on our public institutions. I've talked a lot about schools. Um, you know, we, we, one example of that is, is a bill to end tenure uh, at, at our state's universities. 
Again, uh, you know, tenure is not the biggest problem facing our state right now. We're seeing it all out in our public institutions. And this really goes back to uh, a plan that was developed over 40 years ago. It's rooted in these ideas that, that we hear so often in, in daily debate, things like free market idealism, rugged individualism, you know, that you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps, or the idea that racism is over. These kinds of, of attacks are designed to make us feel alone. And, and I tell you what, uh, nobody likes cooking dinner for one. It's, it's tough. Um, if, if something, these kinds of things are designed to make us feel like if something goes wrong in our life, it's, it's our fault. Uh, and that the government has no role to play in helping us. Uh, and then what's notable is, of course, the right wing can step in and give us someone to blame for our problems. And that's why we should vote for them uh, based on that division. Now here at CCI, we don't buy that, right? Um, we have a cookbook of our own. We use our own ingredients to, to make up uh, the state that we want to see. And it's rooted in our own vision and values, a vision and values that, that say that we all do better when we all do better and that we can learn from our past mistakes and actually make life better for more people by coming together, by celebrating our differences and, and fighting for what we need. And, you know, it's like uh, when you're making a recipe, you got to mix all the ingredients together. And that's what we're saying uh, would make a, a more successful state too, is bringing together, celebrating all the different ingredients that make our state so great. Now, core to that, of course, is what we really need. We need food. We need good food if we're cooking in the kitchen. We need housing. We need healthcare. We need living wages. So again, if, you know, these are the things that we believe we should be focusing on at CCI when we're when we're up at the Capitol cooking up there instead of focusing on fake protections from from uh, this these these phony adversaries like trans folks who are just people trying to work, live, and get educated like the rest of us, or protection from reproductive rights, or protection from funding schools, protection from college professors getting tenure. I I don't even get it. So, uh, you know, I'm going to lean a little bit into this because um, I'm going to take Governor Reynolds as a case in point here. But first, I've got my cookies rolled out before I get too, uh, too hot under the collar. Uh, let's go ahead and get these cookies in the oven. Ooh, fogged up a little bit in the glasses. I'm going to set a timer so I don't burn them because nobody likes crispy cookies. I like mine undercooked a little bit. I'm going to take Governor Reynolds as a case in point. Uh, this week, you know, she was all over the news because she rolled back uh, the the weak mask guidance that we have here in Iowa. Um, and, and she was using the code that, like, we want to uh, do this to, you know, to, to get back to normal, to get our businesses open. And uh, as she's doing that, she's blaming liberals who, who want to destroy our state. Well, I tell you what, I'm a self-professed liberal. I'm a caramel-wearing, ice-fishing liberal. Um, but she used rhetoric like that to attack people like me, like us, who actually want to make our state better when the truth is far from it. You know, like I said, at CCI, we've been calling for stronger mask mandates so that we can get back to normal quicker. We just have to do it safely. We need masks so that we can keep our businesses open safely. We want to keep uh, our schools open safely so that our kids and our teachers and our families can return to those things that we absolutely need. But again, we want to do it in a way that brings us together and keeps our community stronger. What is Governor Reynolds doing while she puts this out there, while she's you know, dividing us as liberals versus conservatives, maskers versus anti-maskers? Well, let's look at what else she did this week. And, and actually over the course of this pandemic, she has, uh, and this is all documented, right? She has provided private testing at a moment's notice for some of her campaign's biggest donors like Iowa Select Farms and Bruce Rest and Summit Ag, she's ensured that the factory farm industry has gotten bailouts, giving uh, you know giant bailouts and COVID relief and derecho relief to uh, out-of-state factory farm corporations like Christensen Factory Farms. She's provided livestock indemnity funds to uh, recoup losses for these same factory farm corporations. And even this week, new revelations came out that, uh, that the day after she was reelected in 2018, I'm going a little further back, the day after she was elected in 2018, she took a private call from an Iowa Select lobbyist, Iowa Select Factory Farms, took a private call to commit to attending a, a dinner and fundraiser, auctioning off a private tour of the Capitol with her, uh, 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 an evening at the, at, at the governor's mansion with her, uh, bending over backwards to, to, to you know, to, 
to cater, uh, as it is, to this factory farm company. So actions for us speak louder than words. And we, we, when we look at where Governor Reynolds is providing relief, we can see truly who she's working for and what her agenda is. It's the same cookbook for corporate power that we saw Trump use and that we're seeing deployed across the country. I'm not hungry for that. I'm hungry for cookies. So um, you've heard enough from me. I've been ranting a little bit. That's okay. It's, uh, you know, we got to turn up the heat in the kitchen every once in a while. So I'm actually going to welcome our special guest for the day. Uh, we're going to keep factory farms, actually, uh, because I'm happy to welcome our guest, uh, Iowa CCI Action Fund organizer, Ava Owen Ryan. Uh, Ava, welcome to the kitchen. Uh, glad to have you here today. Um, it's been a big week at the State House on factory farms and clean water. Uh, so tell me what went down and, and, and uh, what, the, what the priorities are up at the Capitol. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for thanks for having me, Adam. Um, so this year, <laughs> this week, um, for the fourth year in a row, we had a factory farm moratorium bill introduced both in the House and the in the Senate. So we are working with um, Representative Art State in the House and Senator Pam Yoakum in the Senate, um, and a whole bunch of really great allies. House File 440 introduced in the House with 19 co-sponsors, and Senate File 282 introduced in the Senate with um, four co-sponsors. Um, and obviously because of the pandemic this year and because of, you know, elected officials of the state house, not prioritizing the, the safety and health, the health of all Iowans, you know, we had to really look at, you know, how do we, how do we engage, uh, virtually? And so on Tuesday, when those bills were introduced, um, one of the things that we did is we had a, uh, virtual rally where we heard from, from farmers, um, from rural folks, um, with, uh, with, Allies like Sierra Club and Food and Water Watch and Iowa Farmers Union um, and the Iowa Alliance for Responsible Agriculture to share, you know, why uh, a moratorium is important to these folks and why we really need it. Um, and so we had over 100 Iowans tune into that to that virtual rally and um, to really celebrate, you know, this bill being introduced and the work that has been done and also elevate, you know, the work that needs to be done in the future, too. Um, and, you know, a rally is always like one of the first things we do at our typical lobby day up at the Capitol, right? It's really loud. It's um, rotunda. Um, but, you know, oh, my gosh, my cat. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cute cat. Working from home. Yep. Um, yeah. So, so, you know, we typically have that rally up at the rotunda. Um, with our lobby days, but this year, you know, not able to do that. So we kind of broke up some of the other things that we'd want to do and, and still did those virtually with folks. So, um, you know, on Tuesday, we did that virtual rally. On Wednesday night, we got on the Zoom with uh, with Iowans across the state to talk about um, lobbying, to practice telling our stories, because we know that it's our stories um, that will win the hearts and minds of legislators to this issue. And so we practiced telling our stories and also talked about how, you know, we can still lobby and still engage legislators, even in a pandemic, even when it's not safe to go to the Capitol. Um, and then on Thursday, which was just yesterday, we, um, uh, and I, it was actually my favorite day of this, this entire week of action, um, because we uh, had a call in day to Speaker of the House, Pat Grassley. So, um, you know, Pat Grassley, uh, when the moratorium bill first came out, his quote was that this bill is dead on arrival. And he also said that Iowans in his district and Iowans across the state, they don't really care about a moratorium. And we all know that that is absolutely not right. And so yesterday we um, had a call in day to have Iowans all across the state call uh, Speaker of the House, Pat Grassley, to tell them why they care about a moratorium. And then two, to tell him that one uh, elected official, one legislator should not be using their power to stifle discussion on these bills, especially when there is such widespread uh, support. So yeah, so you can see that that phone number pop up on the screen. Um, yesterday we had over 120 calls when I checked in at 3 p.m. Um, and then maybe some more after that. But if you already have, or if, uh, if you haven't, go ahead and give Pat Crossley a call at this number on your screen. Um, and share, you know, with him why why you care about a moratorium and and why we should see discussion on this bill um, by, by elected officials in both parties. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, that, that lobby training was was excellent and it got me just kind of regrounded and you know, what I need to do is a, as a just everyday person calling my legislators. So I actually called Pat Grassley yesterday too and left him a message. Encourage you all to do the same. Thank you for doing that, Ayla. Um and uh yeah, you know, um I know we're we're you know, we're not uh uh too pie in the sky. We we haven't gone into this session expecting to to pass a moratorium. You know, this year we know we're up against a brick wall uh, when it comes to Pat Grassley. Uh, I wish it was a brick oven. We could be having pizza, but it's not. Um, and that, but so so that's not all that was happening at the Capitol though on this issue. Uh, I heard um, there's been a lot of talk about factory farm gas. So I'm just wondering, can you tell us what factory farm gas is? Can I cook with it? And why is it stinking up the Capitol? Yeah, so the capital stinks because House File 287 and um, factory farm gas is just the industry's latest scheme um, that's being pushed at the capital. So what House File 287 does is essentially open the door to large factory farms. So those are factory farms over a thousand animal units um, to add anaerobic manure digesters, uh, which would capture methane as another means of storing all this toxic liquid manure that they create. Um, and methane digestion, or what we're gonna call factory farm gas, is an emerging false solution that's put forth by the industry to really greenwash the air and water pollution problems that they're creating, um, and also set them up to create another revenue stream to prop up the industry that you know can't really financially support themselves. And like here are the three things that like I would say about this that about this bill and about factory farm gas in general is like one, it does nothing to solve our water problems in Iowa. When they burn the methane, all of the nitrogen, all of the phosphorus, all of that manure is still there and it's still getting dumped untreated onto farm fields across our state, running off into our water and contributing to the over 750 waterways that we have in the state. Um, the sec second thing that I would say is that it's completely taking us in the wrong direction, right? It is no substitute for better farming practices like putting animals yeah. back on the land, um, which creates uh, and releases significantly less levels of methane. Um, and then the third thing that I would say is that opening the door, while this bill doesn't directly, House File 287 doesn't directly deal with shifting public money, it opening the door to factory farm gas is essentially opening the door uh, to the factory farm industry, finding another way to hijack our public dollars, which is money that we know needs to be invested in rural infrastructure and in creating good paying jobs um, into our hospitals, um, into public education, right? And so um, we we absolutely don't want them um, uh, passing, passing a bill that allows the factory farm industry to, to set them up to do that. The other thing I will say is, you know, um, on Wednesday, it passed out of the subcommittee with very little discussion, despite the overwhelming amount of people who submitted comments and were there being against it. Um, and yesterday, it passed out of the entire agriculture committee um, with only one Democrat, Lindsey James, voting against it. So we know that this is going to be another uphill battle because the, the factory farm industry, they really call the shots with a lot of those elected officials up there, which which is not right. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's good to know. So digestion, digesting cookies, good. Factory farm di gas, digestion, bad. Got it? Yeah. 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 You should not, you should not cook with it. That is for sure. <laughs> what you should do, what you should do is you should send an email to your uh, representative telling them to vote no on House File 287 because that will be the next step is, is contacting all of our representatives in the House. And so for folks watching too, make sure to contact your legislator using that link on your screen. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Ava. Uh, last question I got for you is, this, this sounds like a lot, but I appreciate all the links there to make it easy to take action. Um, what are other things that people can do to, uh, to plug in, get involved, take action, and, uh, and, and fight for a better food and farm system? Yeah. So after you call Pat Grassley, after you contact your legislator about House File 287, um, we want to ask you to sign up uh, to stay stay in touch and stay in communication about our work by signing up for our Clean Water Dispatch. Um, this is a monthly uh, roundup of all things food and farm and agriculture at CCI and what we're working on. And so signing up for this is a really good way to stay in touch and uh, find ways to plug in as we, as we continue this work moving forward. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ava. Appreciate you 
uh, you and all the the organizers at CCI Action do to make taking action so easy uh, when it's important. Um, we're going to stay in touch about uh, updates on House File 287 as it moves forward. So appreciate you coming to the kitchen today uh, for what's cooking. Thank you, Adam. Yeah. All right. So real quick, I've got about a minute left on the timer. And like I said, I like my cookies just a little bit undercooked, keeps them a little bit more moist, more tender. So we're just going to give those a quick cook. Uh, we always practice kitchen safety. So we're going to use that. Ooh, yeah. I'm going to give it, it needs to be an extra minute. So uh, while those are just finishing up, uh, what's next? What's coming up next week? Well, you know, you heard me mention it's, it's Valentine's Day. And um, uh, unfortunately, a lot of these legislators, it, it kind of feels like they have no heart as, as um, uh, they're focusing on a lot of this legislation. And I should note, by the way, I'm, you know, I'm painting with a pretty broad brush right now. Um, uh, a lot of the legislation that we are seeing at the Capitol is non-controversial, right? It's, it's small tweaks to existing law. Sometimes it can be striking and replacing one word in a bill, uh, and they have to actually pass a, you know, a bill to, to fix or clean up language like that. Uh, but what we're focusing on when we're talking about what's cooking at the Capitol is, um, you know, the, the big issues that we're tracking at, at CCI. And so next week, uh, you know, we anticipate a lot more committee work, but because of all of the subcommittee and committee work we've seen so far, we do expect a lot of these bills to start moving out of, uh, out of their chambers. So we might see a lot more House floor action, House debate, Senate floor action, Senate debate. Um, and, uh, you know, if we see movement, uh, fast movement, for instance, on, on House File 287 that we just heard about, you're going to want to tune in, uh, make sure that you're signed up for our emails uh, so that you get urgent action alerts when your call can have a big impact. Uh, next week on What's Cooking at the Capitol, we've got a, uh, um, oh, one other quick thing on that. One reason to sign up for our emails is our Monday <laughs> newsletter, uh, as you see right there. That's where, you know, it's going to give me a little bit more time today and over the weekend to catch up on all of this legislation. We're a little bit behind uh, so that we kind of weed through everything that's been going on at the Capitol and can prioritize which bills need your action, your call, your email the most. And those will come out to you uh, in an email on Monday. Uh, I know you might be thinking is like, well, my legislators already with us. They don't need to hear from me or my legislators never going to be with us. Uh, so why should I even bother contacting them? It's absolutely critical that we continue to contact them. A lot of times your story, your contact for a legislator who's already with us um, gives them the courage, the ammunition, the, uh, you know, the, the stories that they need to take to the floor and debate. They can reference that. It's good for them to know that their constituents are behind them. Similarly, uh, it's important that legislators uh, who aren't with us know that we are following what they're doing, that they don't get free reign just to uh, uh, run roughshod over the state. So it's, it's absolutely critical that we stay plugged in on the democratic process. Let's go ahead and pull these out. Oh, yeah. I'm going to pull these up just a little bit. We can see there uh, they, they're done just the way I like them. If they weren't so hot, I would go ahead and eat one now. I'm sure we would all get a kick out of me burning my mouth, uh, which has happened all too often. Not today. I'm going to practice safety. Speaking of safety, next week we're going to be joined by Luke Elzinga, who's going to dig in with us on attacks at the state house on the safety net. Um, you know, attacks on on public uh, safety net programs like SNAP. So you don't want to miss miss, miss that uh, when we when we practice all things kitchen safety. Until then. Uh, Keep staying warm. This polar vortex has got to go. Stay safe and keep on cooking. Thanks for joining me today.